So it's time to talk League of Ireland football as we do each and every week here on Highland Underscore program. And former Fun Harps captain Declan Boyle has joined us once again. Declan, good to talk to you again on Highland. Good to be back, Nashin. Uh, well, we're looking into the games that will take place on Friday, Fun Harps and Derry City, uh, both in action. I suppose we'll start with, with Harps. Uh, these games. Ollie Horgan says that these games are big every week, but they're starting to get a bit bigger now, so they are given that, that Harps haven't won a match since they played Waterford. Uh, I was down in Waterford in, in the middle of May, Declan, and they haven't just struck that same form that we, we've seen them hit at the, at the start of the campaign. So how big is this game then, Friday night on the road against Drogheda in your mind? Yeah, listen, I think Ollie's probably correct when he says it's a big match for the, for them. It's, it's important they, they try to get a one or pick up three points somewhere. Um, Drogheda obviously um, have done well at home um, and uh, picked up a lot of points and, and have been formidable this year. And, and obviously they beat Harps early in the season in Fan Park there as well too. 2-1 with the last minute goal from Dan Massey and I think the first uh, game up in, up in Drada was also a 1-1 draw. So listen, it's important to pick up three points from summer um, and just give them a bit of confidence, just not getting the breaks. A lot of injuries as well in the squad and that's affecting the, the performance on the pitch. And uh, they just need to get you know three points from somewhere. Obviously, they have Waterford at home as well. They'll be looking too tired of that for a home one, but it's really important to concentrate on draw it up, but it'll not be an easy, easy uh, match. And, you know, even if they get a draw, potentially that'll be a very good result up there. Yeah, but is it a game that they can take the full points in, Declan, if things start to fall right for them? Because just sort of wee decisions and, and wee things happening in the field just haven't been going their way of late. No, that's correct. They haven't got the breaks. Um, even last week against Longford, where the performance wasn't brilliant. They've probably done enough on the day to get three points, obviously. The, uh, the penalty was a bit, you know, stuck that away probably, and Barry McNamee converts that penalty. They, they probably go on to win the game 2 1. The first goal um, that Aaron Dobbs as well, he looked offside. So, um, a strange one from the referee. Um, maybe he's seen something that I didn't see. But yeah, listen, those kind of decisions going against you. And then, you, you know, you bring down a wee bit of luck, with, you know, injuries and suspension coming on, on, on board as well. And that just affects you a wee bit. A few players have left the squad. So, just leaves it we were thin in numbers and quality on the bench to make changes and uh yeah listen and david webster has missed the last three games and i think you know he's a big player for them we can get him back fit and in the team i think he make a big difference you know even though that uh, johnny the navy's come on and done very well and left back yeah harps ollie horgan said rather that it wasn't looking into the transfer market that was a number of weeks ago but things have changed very very quickly i'm sure the the harps boss now will be, be keeping an eye on on who's available and who he can bring in because it doesn't as you say have the same squad available to him now as we go into the month of july no the squad's definitely depleted i know if you look at the quality they had uh, in the starting 11 also on the bench they've lost players mark russell's gone away and ryan shanley's gone back to scotland as well there's two um that have left the club and there's a few more left there as well so it's 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 important, you know. I've no doubt that Ollie's um, playing that down a wee bit. I would say he's looking to bring in a wee bit of quality at the top end of the pitch just to convert things or another midfielder potentially as well. So you're always looking to bring in a wee bit of quality. And, and what's important is when things maybe are not going the way um, you want them to go, and you're you're out, you're out of luck a wee bit, and, and some decision making you want to begin a player with a wee bit of quality that'll give uh, the players that are already there a wee lift to bring them forward and. Uh, listen, it's, it's, I suppose, uh, throughout the whole season, they've been very good. They've played very well. The performances at home have been excellent. The results haven't gone their way. Um, but now, you know, they, they had a wee blip. They had a really good start and they had a wee blip. Now, it was important just to get through that blip and, and push on from there, as they would say themselves. And, you know, listen, big match and draw. Let's try to get something out of the game, if not three points, and then bring that into the Waterford match next week uh, at home. Yeah, and I suppose it's, it's amazing what three points can do if you haven't had three points in, in quite a number of weeks. If it was to happen tomorrow night, the side would get a massive lift out of it, Declan. Of course, yeah, absolutely. Because, it's you know, sports is all about confidence. Um, and, you know, the more positive results, the, the better players play. And that's, you know, as evident in front of goals or missing chances as well. And, you know, it's lacking a wee bit of composure. They've got, uh, they've got and had opportunities to win the games and they just haven't converted them. And, you know, that has an effect, obviously. They're getting sucked in now to, to obviously, to Longford and also to Waterford. And you want to keep the distance between them as much as possible. But if you can get two or three run, uh, three points on the bounce, one, one, two or three games, actually can mean such a difference. I mean, you can get six points or two games, that gives you such a lift. And it gets you back into the middle of the table and gives everybody around the club a lift, but also the players the confidence to go on and finish out the season on a really positive note. 
Yeah, and they'll be looking for the northwest sides to help them out this weekend. Derry are at the Brandywell, uh, taking on Waterford. Derry were unlucky not to come away at Oriel Park the last day with with, with something deck. And just a second defeat under Rory Higgins. But as Derry looked to take three points against Waterford, um, the uh, the 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 Derry City manager uh, isn't hanging around in relation to, to signings because he's had a very, very busy week, Declan. <laughs> they have. Um, I suppose, listen, it's a great thing to have for Rory to get the, the support of his chairperson and the funding to do so. And, you know, that makes a hell of a difference. I mean, Jimmy McGonagall's come in there from Crusaders, so he can play up top, but he also can play out wide. And I think that's important because David Parker has been up playing as a low, up there um, centre forward. He's just not getting the ammunition or the and the opportunities and hopefully jamie can come in there and give him that now jamie's obviously a perfect goal source from the irish league so um so the instance see how he he's uh, fares out i mean the reason thirty five thousand supposed to be spent on bringing them in from crusaders that's a lot of money um in the league of ireland circuit to, to buy a player and so it'll be interesting to see how he he hits the ground running but has has scored a lot of goals so it obviously comes with a lot of potential obviously Cameron McJanet as well and um, James Akintundi have signed 18 month extensions to the contract so uh, and they also signed three of the young academy players who were involved in the first team as well in contracts professional contracts for the first time so that's really positive um, really good that they're securing and they're giving out long-term contracts because that's important to players in regards to to um, their welfare but also planning ahead and you know people nowadays are professional people and, and if they have mortgages or bills to pay they need to be fit to, to have some sort of security so that's great but it also means that they have these players for the next three to four years which is great the club yeah there, there's rumors rife at the moment there could be another addition uh in the next in the next couple of days now as we speak declan there's there's nothing official here but but junior in some sort of way has been linked with a move back to the brandywell if that was to happen and, and it is the case how big a lift would that be for, for Derry and the goal scoring front yeah, that's a, a big lift, I suppose. He had an excellent season there two seasons ago um, with Derry Study when he played along with Parkhouse between the two of them. They nearly 30 goals got for the season. Um, so that, he will bring them a lift. He can play up top. He can play out wide or right or left. So that, that'll obviously give them um, you know, more quality in those areas um, and strength in those areas because that's probably an area that, that they haven't done that well in all, um, all year. They've relied heavily on set plays um, for their goals. So... They haven't played they haven't scored too many goals from open play so obviously he'll bring that quality and penetration to the team if he comes he, he left off the Derry city and he went to sligo didn't go so well in sligo then he, um there was word he was supposed to go back to to Derry city and then he ended up signing for dundalk so it hasn't worked out from in dundalk a lot of quality up there um but he'd be a welcome addition um and would bring them something a wee bit different up top um if they can sign them and it's a big sign uh, um for Derry city yeah can waterford trouble Derry tomorrow night Waterford have been good. They've been, um, I suppose, the new manager come in and, you know, they've done a small money pre-season there or just during the break and they've got a lot fitter. Um, they seem to have a bit more lift and confidence and more more motivation. They had a big result two weeks ago after beating Longford uh, up in Longford and getting a 2-1 and that puts a wee bit of distance between them and Longford. So they've beaten Dundalk on the road as well and up the Oriel and won 3-1 as well. So they've got big results away from home. Um, you know, they can't put in good performances. I see Derry... Um, getting three points against Waterford uh, at the weekend. Yeah. The other team below Harps and sitting below Waterford as well is Longford Town. You would expect Sligo Rovers to have too much for, for, for the basement club, but and, and Harps will be looking for a, a result there as well that, that would help them a, along the way. But Sligo go into this game probably off the back of their best performance of the season, Declan. Yeah, by all accounts, um, it was a, a top, top uh, rate performance by Sligo against Bowes. The Bowes were coming in good form. Um, and had a lot of big victories as well. Um, it's supposed to be a smashing game of football, actually, by all accounts, and big performance by all the players involved on the night, and, and they got a, you know, a big victory against Bowes, and that gives them the confidence to push on, because they went through you know, three bad results as such, um, and two over the bank holiday weekend, and that's, you know, that's obviously then come into the Bowes game, and, and you know, they got a big victory against Bowes, and that keeps them up, along with St. Pats and Shamrock Rovers at the top of the table, but yeah, um, the last time they went and played Longford, they won one 0 Was uh, Gary Buckley scored a header from, from a, a corner kick? So, but yeah, listen, um, you know, not not be easy as we all know, no easy games in it. But you'd be expecting them to, to get three points against Longford um, on uh, Friday evening. Yeah, and they've added to their squad as well. Um, they have uh, taken in Shimas Kyo to the side. Declan, what what do you make of that move? Billion yeah. Buckley. 
Yeah, she was well, Seamus has been up training along with the first team, but he's also played a few uh, matches for the under 19s under herself. So yeah, really good player. Um it's it just it's a slag on lad himself. Um would have played international football at, at 15s and 16s and 17s and went across to Southampton uh, for two years and has come back in. Just didn't work out from a few injuries. Uh He's a top lad, um, good, really good addition to the team, can play in midfield in, in the sixth or the eighth position and can play right forward as well. So he gives them, I suppose, make the squad a wee bit stronger, um, but an excellent addition to the team. Yeah, and so that means you'll, he's involved with your squad at the minute as well then, Declan. You, you've been keeping a close eye on him. Can you play him, can you? Is he, is he available for you? Yeah, I suppose it's, yeah, listen, um, he can play for 19, he's under 19, so there's three or four of the players that are involved in, in the, the first team of Sligo Rovers can play under 19, yeah, so Johnny Kenny would be another one, he's underage, but listen, he's been playing, so if they're not playing for the first team, they can play for the under 19s, which, you know, they need to be doing at a regular basis, obviously, to keep their fitness levels up, but yeah, listen, they've some really good players, and Sligo have given good opportunities to the young lads to, to excel, and, and a large part of their squad is home-based players. Yeah, will he be available for you on the game on Sunday? Is right Sunday afternoon? Um, I at the moment I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, I'm not this evening, <laughs> so I'm not 100 percent sure. I would I would welcome um I would welcome to have him, but yeah, listen, it's it's a difficult one because um obviously Slagger in Europe as well, I think. So yeah. there's a there's the European and first team have to stay within the COVID the COVID uh, bubble as well, so they can't be involved in two squads. So probably not. Probably won't be available, but hopefully um. Whenever uh, Sligo um, are not involved in European football, then hopefully I'll get them players back playing for the under 18s. Okay, I put you on the spot there, so I did. Uh, yeah. but yeah. The leaders, St. Patrick's Athletic against uh, Bohemians. Uh, Georgie Kelly will be looking to, to add to his total. He's been in brilliant scoring form for, for Bohemians and uh, he's up against a former side as well. Um, it's going to be an interesting Dublin derby. Will Pat still be top of the table after this one, Declan? Yeah, that's an interesting one, you know. I mean, Georgia Kelly, 11 goals this season. You know, he's got yeah, just going really well. Um, a lot better than he'd done last year, obviously, scoring goals. Has that confidence. Scoring big goals as well. Crucial times, he scored, obviously, a couple of hat-tricks as well on top of that. But he's probably been the player of the year so far in the league. Um, so, yeah, listen, it's, it's going to be a big threat to St. Pat's. It's an interesting one. It's obviously a double a Dublin derby and in a normal circumstance, to be a big crowd at that game with a really good atmosphere. So... Uh, it's just hard to know. I mean, St. Pat's don't give too much away. Bowls score a lot of goals, so something's got to give them there. I'm probably expecting a draw out of that one. Probably, uh, I think it'll, it'll be a uh, score, a not score, score draw. Yeah. So. Yeah, one of the matches as well. Shamrock Rovers against the Dock. They these two have been involved in some tremendous games, of course, in, in recent history. Rovers are the defending champions. Uh, it's all changed at Dundalk. Uh, can Dundalk get a result at at the Tallis Stadium? Yes, they haven't found their top end form as much as they would want this year, Declan, but I'm sure it's a game that Doc will be up for. Yeah, that's a big match for, for both clubs, I suppose now. They've played each other, I think, three times. Um, Shamrock Rovers, um, they played each other in the Presidential Cup at the start of the season that went to penalties and uh, Dundalk came out on top. Shamrock Rovers beat them already 1-0 in Tala and in Oriel Park. Um, Dundalk turned them over in 2-1. So, in instance, see, you know, I'm expecting Shamrock Rovers potentially to, to get three points here, but listen, I, you just don't know that the Dundalk team, uh, Shamrock Rovers, um, uh, Richie Tiles was coming on board, so he's he's available for selection, so it'll be interesting to see will he play against um, Dundalk, his old club as well, so he's a, a welcome addition um, to the Shamrock Rovers um, squad and, and first team, and you know, so he's bringing a bit of quality from that midfield area, maybe they're missing that a wee bit, they're not as free-flowing and scoring as much as they normally do Shamrock Rovers, but they're getting over the line. And without playing particularly well, um, they're still top of the table along with St. Pat's and Sligo Rovers. So it's a big game for both clubs. Uh, very interesting to see how this is going to pan out. Well, will we see the the, the, the better Dundalk team or will we see the, the, the team that's played all year where they've lacked a bit of confidence and have lost a lot of games? Okay, listen, Declan, as always, thanks for joining us. Enjoy the football at the weekend. Thank you, Washington.